Good morning, all of you. I think after listening to Otto, Raja, and Karthik, uh, mine will be a bit more a serious topic. I think uh, the topic which has transformed the world in the last three decades. That is what I am going to talk about, uh, the transformation that has gone in the entire world, particularly in India, on technology. So I am going to talk to you about the dreams of technology. And I just wanted to give you a small background of how this technology has transformed. And I would like to show you some of the unpredictable myths of technology. I think the first, next slide. Next slide. Yeah. If you really lead this, these are the technology unpredictable. I think there is a world market for only five computers. Thomas Watson, 1943. There is no reason for anyone who would want a computer at home. Ken Olson, 64, 640 kilobyte is enough for anybody. Bill Gates, Chairman Microsoft. The telephone has too many shortcomings to be seriously considered as a mean of communications. The device is of no value to us. I think with this kind of a predictability, which has been shot down by the growth, by the explosive nature of this industry, the entire technology has transformed. I think as all of us speak here, either uh, Mr. Artur Raja or Mr. Karthik Srinivasan, all of us know that how the technology has enabled us to be what we are today. I think uh, uh, I just wanted to touch upon some of the facts of technology and also how I grew up. Uh, after graduating out of uh, uh, IIT Madras in computer science in 1985 and joining TCS and being there for the last 27 years, I think the technology has become the part of my DNA. I'm sure for every software professional who wants to achieve something great, technology has to become the part of your you know, running nerve. And that has been the case for me when I really entered the Reserve Bank of New Zealand in 1986, got trained by IBM in the New Zealand, and then worked on a very uh, key business transforming uh, complex application which we delivered for the RBNZ, we call it, and then we won the award. I think uh, that really did not stop with uh, just that project. When we came back to India and then joined back our job in Chennai, every one of us in the team were the sort of the cakes in the market. There were people who were calling us back in the New Zealand, in the Australia, in the US, because of the way we delivered the project in the latest and the greatest technology those days. And mind you, that was a batch processing system. And people thought that was really great and with very bit, very minimal of online processing that time. And then my journey on the technology uh, was further enhanced when I went for the Seoul Olympics in Seoul, working out of the American Express Processing Center from Australia, Sydney, which also happened to be the 200th centenary year for Australia and then working on the transformation engagement from Burroughs machine to IBM mainframe because of the large volume of the people who are going to use the American Express charge cards. And that again became another milestone for us. So in the entire journey of 27 years, I really think that it has got three parts. One is evaluating myself and then my personal growth in terms of learning the technology, appreciating the technology. The second part of it was managing people. The third part of it was leading people. I think in the last few years, what I'm doing is valuing people. And that means the, all the stakeholders, whether it's a customer, whether it's the academia, whether it is the internal associates, or the vendors who supply a lot of software and hardware. And that has been the transforming journey. I just want to recall one of the instances in, in Miami in 1993. And I'm sure all of you know that uh, that's a place where it is often hit by tornadoes. And that was the Hurricane Andrew where I grew up and I was working for American Express in Miami where there was my young daughter with two and a half years old and my mother-in-law uh, who is about 69 years old with me. And the entire town came to a standstill. 
and because of which there was no water, no power, and you can't drive down to get any even a loaf of bread. And that has been a great experience for all of us to survive in a barbecue coal, you know, and then heat up the milk and then drink it for the next one week before really, you know, getting the power back. In in US, all of you will know that if you don't have power, you don't have anything else. If you can't drive, I don't think I think your limbs are cut. And that is the interesting story which I had, where it taught me a lot of things: how to really survive not only in the crisis with respect to your official commitment, it has also helped me a lot to help the people who are in my own apartment complex, small children, old, old people, and then help them out so that we can give them whatever we could offer so that they can survive and then come out of the tornado or the hurricane Andrew crisis. And that has been a very interesting story. And then I would like to really talk about the transformation that happened in the technology space with respect to the year 2000 problems where more than 1 billion lines of code has been cut over and then working with uh, multinationals like you know, across the globe and then traveling across the globe many times to get all the projects and delivering that on time because Y2K did not have any negotiable deadlines. So we had to do it before uh, in the cutover of 2000 you know, January 1st. And then that gave us a lot of strength into getting a lot of uh, uh, global, uh, you know, work out across various countries and then doing it out of any center within India for, of TCS. I would definitely like to think that that transformed the entire industry where we really looked at IT outsourcing, offshoring as a model of execution and delivering value to the customer. And uh, one of the instances where I was working for JP Morgan Chase, where we had to, where the banks were going through a tough time of mergers and acquisitions, there was a case when the bank one got acquired by JPMC, and we had a very, very large system. And uh, you must know that just like you are worried about your own delivery, your own capability, your own team's performance, even the clients are more worried about their own stability at work, their own delivery capability, and then how do you really make an offshore vendor from India to work and deliver your goods. And the, here was the person, uh, Farooq Sinai, who was the CIO of JP Morgan Chase, who called me uh, in not in a normal time at 1 a.m. in the morning, asking me, Hema, are you sleeping? I said, 1 a.m. here today in India, Farooq, so I'm, I'm sleeping. So he told me that I'm really worried about this project because it touches about 186 channels across the entire bank. And Hema, if you don't deliver this project, if TCS does not deliver this project, you have the ability to bring the bank to its knees. And what would you tell at 1 a.m. when you're half asleep, where you cannot even talk with a lot of data recollected in your mind? What I did was I just told him, Farooq, I want to only assure you of one thing. I do not know whether you will be on your uh, uh, knees because the systems are failing. But I feel that you'll be still on your knees mainly because you want to thank God that the system has gone well. That is the confidence he has got, and that is the confidence of working and then leading 155 people across the three delivery centers and then telling them, and this is what I have committed, and if I have to lead by the front, if I have to stretch the potential of my team, if I have to make sure that they are competent enough, if I have to deliver the goods to my customer, I'm sure all of us had to work as a team. And that is what I've learned in all these years. If you are good, if you are the person who, is, who works more than everyone else in your team, and if you are the person who can lead the team and then show your empathy, and then making sure that you really stretch the potential, and then take care of them at bad times, and you be their coach, you be their hunter, you be their explorer, and then you be the counselor at various points, points in time, depending upon the situation and making sure that they all know the goal of the project or the engagement or the customer, I'm sure delivery can definitely be uh, not difficult. And this I'm telling you from the story of somebody who has joined an organization in, in 1985 with a mere uh, total of 1,500 associates to what we are today with the 2 lakh and 50,000 employees. And that is the part of the growth story I just wanted to emphasize, saying that if you are working hard, if you know how to lead from the front, if you are a person who can appreciate technology, I'm sure technology became more or less like a hygiene factor for me when I worked on the ICL 
2904, IBM 370 Prime, IBM uh, 3090, 4381, now with a Z10 Enterprise class with HP servers, I series, AS400, and then X uh, and the P series servers, and across various technologies. What I really learned the best was as and when you move up the ladder, you have your feet on the ground. And that is the one which will definitely keep you going, mainly because you are humble and you always can look up, uh, look up to others as role models and then imbibe the best things from them and then deliver the goods. And uh, that has really taught me a lot of uh, you know, good things. Can you just uh, show the other film? The, the other one. These are some of the glimpses where I thought uh, some of the captions would uh, help us. Next, next please. All greatness is achieved while performing outside your comfort zone. And you need to resort to a sport or any other activity to regenerate and get re-energized. And the only thing that separates successful people from the others is the willingness to work hard. I'm sure this is a lesson for all of us. The best way to be ready for the future is to have it there. Only taking great risks, you can achieve greater results. The world belongs to the energetic. And this is basically the perigee of the technology where we have a Sirisiri Development Center where we have uh, invested in a very large multi-million dollar mainframes and that con gets connected to more than 60,000 employees of TCS across the globe, across all countries. We operate out of 42 countries, we have about 154 offices. We have more than about 36 global delivery centers. From each and every one of them, this machine can be accessed. And these are some of the outing which we had with the New Zealanders, where all of them were dressed in Indian way. This is one of the career counseling we do every year for the plus two students where I address about more than about 10,000 students every year. I think uh, the growth has been very, very uh, good. I just thought I will just conclude how India as a country is being ready for this technology challenge. I'm sure all of us are really following the trends in the technology with respect to mobility solutions, 
with respect to big data, with respect to social computing, with respect to legacy, transformation, modernization, integration and re-engineering and re-architecting. But what is very important is to really uh, be the leader, go with the team, achieve success, share it with the team and definitely success will be yours. I just want to thank all of you for listening to me. Thank you.